Welcome to Gravity Engine Tutorial 6, where we look at the trajectory prediction feature that's been added to Gravity Engine Release 1.5. We're going to build the following scene, and what you can see here is the future path of the spaceship is being predicted by the Gravity Engine, the future path of the binary stars are being shown, and this is all being done for more than just a simple central body, two body problem. This is an actual end body look ahead simulation going on in the scene. And we have time markers showing the future time of events in the scene. So let's stop that. We'll begin with a new scene. And then we'll build up all of the things you just saw. So let's begin with an empty scene. As with all things Gravity Engine, we want to add a Gravity Engine to the scene. And one of the things you'll notice in version 1.5 is there's now a new foldout for trajectory prediction, which is by default turned off. Trajectory prediction is going to do a computation for some amount of time into the future, the time indicated by trajectory time, and then evolve that future state and the current state as each scene frame moves on, unless there's a change in the state, in which case we need to recompute the future trajectory. So it can become computationally expensive if you're making a lot of changes uh, in each frame to recompute all of the trajectories. So this is only something we want to turn on if it's going to get used. So in order to have something interesting in our scene, let's go into the prefabs folder and we will grab a binary star system and drop that prefab into the scene and we'll change the axis of this binary star system to 40 units. And now we'll go about adding a spaceship and then we can look at the trajectory the spaceship takes in the gravitational field of the binary star. So let's create an empty object. We'll call it spaceship. And we'll locate this object at uh, 0, minus 20, 0. And we want this to be under the control of the gravity engine, so we'll add an end body component. Given that we're dealing with two stars, the mass of the spaceship can be essentially 0. We'll leave that at 0. And we'll give it a little bit of upwards velocity, just to make things a little bit interesting. Now we want to have our spaceship look like a spaceship, so we'll go down to the prefabs, we'll grab this spaceship model, and we'll make it a child of the spaceship. And you can see if we look in the scene, if we look at the spaceship model, it's trying to look like an Apollo command service module with uh, just some cylinders and some cones. There is also a thrust cone, which we'll uh, make use of so we'll well, attach to the spaceship model already is a spaceship with trajectory script here. And this script has the thrust cone linked into uh, that slot in the script. And that's so that as we press plus and minus to uh, change the thrust, we'll get a red cone out behind it indicating the current strength of the thrust. So now it's time to add a trajectory, so what we'll do is we'll create a new game object, which we'll call trajectory. And we'll make this a child of the spaceship. And we'll add a trajectory component. And notice that as you do this, we do get a trajectory component down here, but we also get a line renderer automatically added, and it's that line renderer that the script trajectory will use to build the future path, uh, well, or that the gravity engine will use to, uh, to fill in. So the trajectory script gives you some of the kind of usual things that a, a trail would have. There's a minimum vertex distance between new points, when it's worth adding a new point, the maximum number of points, and then there's some other fields here that we'll talk about in a minute. The other thing that this element needs, because it has a line renderer, is some kind of a material. So let's go ahead and grab some red material and put that on the trajectory child of the spaceship. And then that way we're not affecting the spaceship at all, only the trajectory. That's the reason we made it a separate game object child of spaceship. 
And that puts all the elements in place for us to have the trajectory on the spaceship. We simply need to go to the gravity engine, enable the trajectory prediction feature. In order to have a uh, more dynamic camera system in the scene, we'll go to prefabs and grab the mission camera and drop it into the scene. So what this has is a main camera and also a script here called camera spin which allows us to use the arrow keys to spin the camera. Notice that the main camera is offset a particular position from the origin. We're going to change that to minus 35. It gives us kind of a nice view of this binary star system. And then since we don't need the main camera that originally came from the scene, we're just going to delete that. So now we'll go ahead and press play. We can see the path of the spaceship going between the two binary stars. That red line is a little bit on the wide side, so let's go to the trajectory, find the line renderer, and we can change the width to say something like 0.4 units. And in order to make the spaceship path a little bit more interesting, we can go to the spaceship and add a little bit of sideways velocity, say maybe 0.5 in the x direction. And then when we press play again, we see a slightly different, more interesting path that the spaceship is going to take into the future. So one of the things that the path doesn't show you is how quickly the spaceship will go between points on the path. So there is an attribute in the trajectory component that allows you to set time mark intervals. And in order for that to happen, we need to populate this time marker prefab slot. So in the prefabs, there is a time marker, which is a flattened disk. And we'll change the interval to say 2.5. And now if we press play, what you'll see is at fixed time intervals along the trajectory, you get this time marker. And the time marker is positioned so that its Z axis is oriented towards the future direction of the trajectory. If in addition we want to have the future time labeled with a numerical value, this is also something we can do. If we look at the trajectory component, we can see there's a time text prefab slot. So it's possible to grab the trajectory text prefab here and drop it in. And what that will do is it will add a Unity UI text component to each time marker. But in order to see those components, we need to have a canvas in our scene. So what we need to do is under game object UI, add a canvas. We need that canvas to be in world space because that's where the trajectory is going to be. And then we need in the gravity engine, and we can call this time marker canvas. And notice that in the gravity engine component, there was a slot that said canvas for text optional. We now need to tell the gravity engine where it should put these time markers as children. So all of them will end up as children on the time marker canvas object. So if we put that in and then we press play, we now see numerically the future time at which particular points in the trajectory will be encountered. And now that we have a nice fully defined trajectory component, we can duplicate that and then just take it and put it on each of the binary stars. So we'll take this one up here. We'll take this one and put it up here. And then our spacecraft trajectory was red, so let's change the colors. So we will put a blue material on the Alpha Star trajectory and a green material on the Beta Star trajectory. And so those elements have time markers and oh, we need to make this a child of Alpha Star. Now we can see each of the stars moving in their arcs. The blue's not very legible there, but we can see the objects 
evolving in the scene, very much like they were at the start. So the final element is how one can adjust the trajectory as something in the scene changes, for example, when the spaceship model applies thrust. So this spaceship model, if we look at the spaceship with trajectory script, uh, is very much like the one in the orbit predictor. So if you press space, the scene will pause. You can use ASDW to rotate the ship and plus or minus to change the thrust. And apply thrust in the gravity engine will automatically recompute trajectories for the scene if necessary. So if we let this start off and then press spacebar, we can press plus and we immediately see a change in the trajectory. And as we rotate the ship, the direction of that thrust changes and you can see the path the ship is going to take changes. And this is recomputing the trajectory. So for example, when we spin, every frame we're rotating, we're recomputing the future path of all the objects in the scene. Now that can become a bit of a real-time issue. So if when we look at stats here, you can see over here the graphics frame rate is suffering as a result of this recomputing trajectories every single frame. So there's an ability in the gravity engine to throttle that back a little bit by using this frames between resets. So if we were to say no more than every tenth frame do we want to do a trajectory recomputation, if we put that in, press play, still have our stats here, so if I now stop the spaceship, add a bit of thrust and rotate. So we're now not going down, in, not losing our frame rate quite so much, we might actually want a number slightly bigger than every 10 frames, maybe every 15 frames. But I think that conveys the reason that that slot is there. Thanks for watching.